So here's the garden for county or county uh, greenhouse. It's called county because it's on the county property here. It's an old dump. Really? That's pretty nice. What are these again? That's the Brodea. Okay. Polyensis. Right. So, Isle of Vista is the southernmost range oh, right. for that bulb, and it has this beautiful purple blue flower. Yeah. And uh, and it, and the reason it's rare and um, threatened is because of development. Oh, see, we did lose one here. But, you know, that's not bad. Out of all our plants, yeah. I see one. <laughs> We're going to have to give Ruthie a slap on the hand. <laughs> kidding. This isn't as... Yeah, no failure. Last week's work. Hmm? Five years to the planning process for the project. Corporate commission is really tough. And the more urban it is, the more people involved, the more visible it is, and then you add another five years. Because Everybody has to say what they might say, and it all takes time, and there might be some lawsuits, and blah, blah, blah. So, planning is critical because if you don't plan right, you're going to have a failure. Here. And if you have a failure, then the whole science of restoration of college looks bad. The goal is always no failures. Accomplish that is through good planning. That's the Malibu. So, what was their project? Malibu Lagoon Restoration Enhancement Plan, prepared by the State Coastal <laughs> Conservancy and the Kellogg's Park, Parks and Recreation. So what always happens to wetlands? Filled in. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so a long time ago, this one started getting filled in. Way, way back, they, at the back end of it, they filled it in and made ball fields out of it. 25 years ago, they took out those. And they thought that that would be enough. But it wasn't. So, so now, what? if they don't have tidal flow and they don't have a functioning system, what do they have? Swamp. Lake. A swamp. A swamp. A cesspool. A cesspool. It's mosquito-ridden. It stinks. It is not functioning. OK? So that's what, so this is Malibu. We can't have a foul odor. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> this is the high rent district. Not going to happen. So, so they um, had this plan here was approved in 205, and and they have um, they're going to change the elevation. So how do you get tidal flow? You've got to open it up. Yep. Dig it out. Huh? Yep, so they're going to How many truck loads do they say they're going to take out of thousand there? dump truck loads of sediment to change the grade to out of three channels to retain tidal flow. There's some photos in there. This document right here prepared by Moffitt and Nicole 
from Long Beach, probably two hundred thousand dollars or three hundred thousand or four hundred thousand dollars worth of work. It could be a half million dollars to an environmental consulting company. This document here, the Yosemite Valley Plan, this took twenty-five years and about five million dollars to consult this, right? Just this, I mean, this is not the whole thing. The Yosemite well, Plan is about and this is probably not and the this whole is thing not either. the whole thing. I didn't I didn't print out the monitoring component because I, I didn't need that. I was more concerned about the implementation. This is thirty years of work. Mm -hmm. Airport plan, thirty years. We were just at a meeting yesterday, the Mission Creek restoration plan, forty years. So this stuff doesn't happen overnight. Is it one animal biologists, you have the GIS mapper people, you got the word processor person who's putting it all in documents, photographer goes out and takes pictures, um, you know, and on and on and on. It could be a lot more people than that. When when they were trying to get the plan approved for Rincon Creek, that's this plan here. And I'll leave these out here so you can look at them. Um, there are schools involved. The Kate School is on this watershed. Actually, that's, excuse me, that's the uh, Carpentry Creek flood, not Rincon. But very similar because there's agriculture. Well, farmers don't want to be told that they're supposed to get rid of an Arizona crossing because the steelhead can't get up and all that. So how are you going to get a farmer to buy into a, a watershed plan that's going to go through his property It's going to make him have to spend money? How are you going to get the greenhouse growers to buy into the, uh, what's that wetland down there in Carpinteria, Carp Salt Marsh, right? How are you going to get them to buy into it, greenhouse growers? Because they don't want to see you. Really broad goal. Get everybody to agree to that, you know? We want a healthy environment for our kids, right? Once you get everybody to agree on that, and sometimes that doesn't even happen, like, Hollister Ranch, people are redneck, they don't care about anything, so they're throwing monkey wrenches and that's why nothing's going on up there. So finally you get everybody to agree to it and okay, make it as broad as possible, and then you start having to get down to brass tacks. Okay, how are we actually going to do this? A month ago, they want 68,000 plants by next fall. Well, we've got the seed, they said. Well, they gave us, you know, about an ounce of seed for 62,000 plants. Of half the species of well, somebody screwed up in the planning process, right? When we did the airport job, we were involved in the planning from the very beginning. So you need to bring all the stakeholders. You've got to have coordination. Everybody has to be on the same page. Uh, they didn't bother to tell us, but nine months or so before the plants were supposed to go in the ground, um, one of their permits got denied. They didn't bother to say anything, so it comes to the day when we're supposed to deliver the plants, and they said, oh, we knew nine months ago that we weren't going to need these plants. Well, we should have just thrown them away then instead of spending nine months taking care of them because it's going to take another year. So that project was three years behind schedule just because of one permit, and we had to resell the, the project three times. Right? Bad planning. They're much better now, the City Creeks Committee. Remember the old Bonnet Park, what a disaster that was? Um, three to five years minimum on the on the whole thing. Twenty years sometimes. Um, when it comes to actually, you know, the plants and the plan as far as what you're trying to do, your goal is you're going to restore the habitat for the steelhead, or you're going to restore the habitat for tidal flow for the savanna sparrow, or you're going to do this or do that. Then it really comes down to where where the ecologists get down and say, how are we going to do that? And uh, Wayne Farron, who was our mentor, he always said, look at edges, plan around edges. And edges are, in an ecological term, it's called an ecotone or an edge. It's where uh, two different habitat types interact. That's an edge. It was a really beautiful edge when we were on Santa Cruz Island in Laguna. So it was four edges within 50 feet of each other. So there's the creek, and then there was a 
taifa edge, which is the cattail, and then it went into a willow edge. And that was only a two-foot edge. And then a six-inch rise in elevation and a willow edge that was about four feet wide. And then went up another two or three inches, and then there was the stickless edge. And then it folded into the Juncos Mexicana edge, another two inches higher. And then it went into the coastal sage-grub edge. Bang, bang, bang. And those edges are all sort of overlapping a little bit. And in those edges where you have, you have the most biological diversity. Um, what's the, how many plants um, in Paula's plant, the Prisoner's Harbor? What's the species uh, numbers? I mean, the different uh, number of species? Six. Six. Six species. The plant we just got from Malibu. Right by other side of you. Right over there. Sixty-nine. This is a good plan. Prisoner's Harbor plan is not well thought out. Six species in a wetland. Should be sixty species. Right? Okay. So you, you want to add as much biodiversity because you're playing God anyway. You don't know exactly what's going to work. So more species are better than less species. You want to add as much biodiversity. If you, if you get it wrong and that species doesn't make it, that's fine. Another one's going to make it, right? Um, so add as much biodiversity. You want to find a reference site or, or reference sites. And this is what the other semester uh, that we teach is the whole assessment that goes into the plan and figuring out um, you know, all that stuff. And you, you, you have a, what's called a reference site or a template. And so, say we want to restore that that hill up over there, uh, we need to go somewhere close by where it has the same aspect, it's facing east, same sort of slope, same sort of elevation, and it's quality habitat. Santa Cruz Island, it's a wetland, Prisoner's Harbor, um, there's only four other wetlands on the island, so we go. that's where we went last uh, two, two or three days ago. We went to Lagunas, which is a wetland. We've been to Willows, which is a wetland. Salsas we haven't been to yet. We should have been there two years ago, so we should have been collecting seeds. And then there's Coches Prietos, and then there's Scorpions, with five wetlands on the island, including, so six with prisoners. The prisoners is so destroyed, nobody knows what it looked like because it was filled in 1870, and no one took any pictures before they filled it, or what plants were there and everything. So we're looking at these other wetlands, and so what we're doing in our mind is saying, okay,